Morning, how we doing? Welcome to the River. I'm Pastor Matthew. It's your first time here. Stop by the Welcome Center and get a gift on us. And can we welcome all those that are joining us online right now and those up in Chesterton and, and around our campuses? Can we do that? Come on, let's do better than that. Good stuff. So Monte just shared, man, this is the week of Christmas. How many people got your shopping done? Great. Halfway there. All right. Good stuff, man. Hopefully you have an amazing Christmas. Uh, we are excited about this week. It's maybe one of my favorite weeks of the year. I love Christmas at our Christmas at the river services. Amante shared that, but I want to just reiterate it again. Thursday at six, Friday at six, Saturday at four and six. Make sure you drop by the welcome center, get a free ticket, uh, for whichever hour you're going to bring all of your friends and your family and your neighbors to, and even the people you don't like, because maybe after they give their life to Jesus, you will like them. Amen. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that could be a good idea. And so, uh, man, but seriously, you don't have to have a ticket to get in the door. We're not like that kind of place. It just kind of helps us know how many people are coming to each out, each service. So you never know. We might have some treats or something for you, but we'll see what happens. All right. So you guys ready to dive in? Man, I'm pumped up. Oh, yeah, also December 25th, Christmas morning, you're going to join us in our living room uh, for Christmas morning, and uh, we're going to share some of our traditions, and you're going to hear from myself, you're going to hear from Nicole. Uh, the joke around here has been that she gets emails now that people call her pastor, so we're going to see how she steps up and toes the line. Amen? That sounds like a plan. And uh, so she's going to share a little bit, and our, our middle child... The girls didn't want any part of it. They were mad once they figured out that he did want a part of it, all right? And then they all want a piece of the pie, but Levi's gonna share a little bit with you as well. So it is a full-fledged on Christmas emergency, all right? So it will be a fun morning for sure. We'll have worship for you, and you'll get to do that in your PJs, with your family, around your computer or your TV uh, when that comes live. Sound, go sound good? Yeah. It's gonna be a great day. So if you don't have a TV or a computer, um, just read the Christmas story and God bless. All right, so it's going to be a great, great Christmas. Looking forward to it. Make sure you do everything you're supposed to do. Man, we are in, in our final week of the series uh, Presence Over Presence, but I want to make sure you understand something. It isn't the last message I'll share of the year. Uh, for Christmas at the River, I will preach, uh, and I'm going to share with you about Jesus on the shelf. This elf is getting all the glory, and I think Jesus should get some more, all right? And so you want to, it's going to be a, just a quick message that I have for you, and uh, hopefully it'll be fun for you. I want to jump right into Matthew chapter 1 and uh, see where we go after this for our time this morning, though. It says, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name why? Because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, Emmanuel which means God with us. God is talking straight to my man Joseph right here. That's who he's talking to. He's, he's gone to, to Joseph and said, hey, here's the deal. I want you to, to you're going to be the, you're going to be the dad of my son. Matter of fact, if you read the heading, if you still use a paper Bible, they have these headings. And I, I never picked up on it until about a couple months ago when I was studying for today, when it says, Joseph takes Jesus as his son. Now, that doesn't seem like a really big deal, except Joseph has never been with Mary, all right? Like, I asked our children's workers today, I said, man, how is it going with explaining the whole Jesus in the womb thing to some of our children. Oh, it can be challenging. How did he get there? You know, how do babies get there? I'm like, man, you guys are doing a great job. I'll let somebody else explain that. I mean, this kind of, this first chapter of Matthew kind of reads like a Maury Povich show, if you know what I'm saying. Like, this is like, who's the dad anyways type of moment. That was a joke. Loosen up, all right? And so, the moment that's going on. But Joseph has accepted the calling that God has given him to be literally the dad of his son. And Matthew is quoting out of Isaiah 7, 14, where he says, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. That, as Matthew quotes that verse, as you look through the story, you'll recognize that Matthew jumps right over the manger scene. Like he's not really into the end, he's not into that. He jumps right to the manger scene. He quotes a ton of Old Testament scripture. Matter of fact, he uses 53 different quotes of Old Testament scripture out of 25 of the 39 books because the people that Matthew's writing to is a Jewish reader. 
And he wants the, the reader to clearly see that Jesus is the Son of God, that this is the Messiah that they had been waiting on. And so he skipped over all the other stuff, and he goes straight to making some hugely bold statements that say this, the Messiah has arrived, he is here. And in John 1, 14, it, in the Living Bible, it says, and Christ became a human being and lived here on earth among us and was full of loving forgiveness and truth. And some of us have seen his glory, the glory of the only, what? Son of the who? Now, God has come to earth to have every, so we can have a relationship with him. This is this whole picture of John chapter one, verse 14. This in the theology worlds is what they call the incarnation of God. Now that's pretty deep for me, I know. Let me get, I mean, here's one for you. I, this is maybe the only thing I remember from this entire study of my theology degree and that I paid a lot of money for. Are you ready? Tomorrow morning at the water cooler or at work or maybe around the dinner table today, say, children, do you understand? And in Matthew chapter one, really what we're having described to you is the hypostatic union of God. Come on. Like, I remembered that. I was like, I don't even know why I remembered it. I'm like, why did I remember that? But literally what that means is the two natures of God forming as one in the womb of a teenage girl named Mary. He was fully God and he was fully man. As a man, he knew what it meant to be tempted. As a man, he knew what it meant to feel pain. He knew what it meant to be outcast. He knew what it meant to be betrayed. He knew what it meant to be lied about. Does that sound familiar to anybody today? And what Matthew is proclaiming in his gospel is this, is that the one who created the world has now joined the creation and to live with the created. All because he is Emmanuel, God with us. Do you see the weight of that? Do you see like, I'm trying to get you to understand through this series that, that the presence of God in your life and in my life and in our world is not something small or minute or something we should just sing about. Wesley, John Wesley himself put it this way. He's laying on his deathbed and he's done incredible things for the kingdom. He's written all kinds of books and he's, he's started an entire movement around the world. And this is literally at the end of it all. He raises his hands in the air and here's the quote that they have him down for. The best of all of everything is is God with us. Amen. Christmas for many of us can bring up all kinds of thoughts and feelings. Can I just tell you today that I hope Christmas doesn't remind you of what you lost. But my hope and prayer is, is that Christmas this year will remind you that God is closer than you think. That God is closer than you think today. And that his presence this Christmas would be real to you. Jesus wants to do so much more than to just watch over you. He wants to do more than just give you a, a get out of hell free card. He came so that you might experience his presence in a fulfilled life while you're on this earth. But why are so many people just flat out missing it? I, I've thought about this as I, as I studied. I thought, man, why are there so many people that are literally just flat out missing experiencing the presence of God. Have you ever wondered that? Maybe you're here today and you're like, man, I'm not, I just don't feel the presence of God. Maybe one of these reasons why will hit home with you. I think there's really three reasons. The first is this, is many of us say we, we can't feel his presence. Well, let me help you with, if you felt and touched his presence all the time, you'd no longer have a need for faith. And our faith actually leads us to experience the presence of God. The second reason some of you don't experience his presence is that we're just too busy to feel his presence. We're just too busy. Any, anybody feel too busy this time of year? I mean, we call this the holidays, but I think we'd be better off to call it holidays, D-A-Z-E-D, -E if you can't figure that out. I mean, I don't know about you, but man, like you walk in the house and, and there's, you know, at least at our house yesterday, Nicole was complaining about this to me. She's like, do you realize you have like three or four different scents burning in the house? I'm like, oh, it's so good, isn't it? <laughs> like you're wasting candles. And I'm like, who cares? We'll buy new ones. Like, like this is great. This is great. Because over here by the couch, when I sit here, I feel like I'm in the forest because I have my fir tree candle burning. Come on. And then, and then I go over to where I do my prayer time, and, and it's the sticky buns camera, can, uh, candle. Come on. 
all right? And that's good, all right? And by the way, man, I don't need any more nutty bars or any more nutty bar memes sent to me, all right? I'm done with the nutty bars, all right? It was an illustration for a couple weeks. We're out. Can I get an amen on that, all right? Thank you. Stop sending them to my email, all right? And so, so Jackie's tired of, like, filtering them for me. And so, because it's bad. I'm trying to overcome an addiction. You guys are encouraging it. But moving on. It was spawns of sin. No, I'm just kidding. And so you got the sticky buns candle. And then over here, you know, she's got her little cinnamon thing going. And you walk in, and it's kind of like you're in overload. Anybody? Come on. And then, and then you add in all the baked goods that you people send home with us. Oh, like last week. Oh. I walked in and there was just a wafing of chocolate covered cherries and chocolate dipped. I don't even know what you're dipping in chocolate, but man, it was good. It's like going, you know, in the summertime, we deep fry everything. And at Christmas, we somehow dip everything in chocolate and it all becomes better. Can I get a witness? I mean, it was just like, oh. So I got sticky buns. I got chocolate. I got my fir tree. I got cinnamon going over here. And, and, and it's like a small piece of heaven. I mean, you kind of get high on that. And then like you're coming and going, you got the busyness of the season, you got shopping to do and, and you've got ball games to go to and, and, you, and you've got a whole church thing to do and you, you've got a Christmas party for work and you got a Christmas party for this, you got a Christmas party with people you don't even like and, 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 and you're busy. And, and, and literally, if we're not careful, at least for Nicole and I, at the, if we're not intentional about actually getting out of the days of the holidays, on December 26th, I'll have to introduce myself to her and say, hi, my name is Matthew. I'm your husband. Because here's what I know. Busyness in our world will always steal the intimacy out of every relationship. And for some of you, it's stealing the intimacy out of your relationship with God. And so maybe we just need to hear from God where he says, be still, come on, and know. That's why I love the last thing we do at the Christmas at the River Service. All of the fancy lights that will be in here and all of the machines that are going to set off fireworks or whatever they're going to do on this stage. And, and hopefully I don't burn my hair like Michael Jackson. But anyway, it's like, that's all going to happen. And, and we're going to get Jesus as on the shelf and all the things are going to happen. But at the end, we're just going to stop. And we're going to turn out all the lights. And we're just going to be still. And in that moment, know that he is God. God with us. But some of you just feel too busy to feel his presence, experience it. Some of you just feel honestly undeserving. All you can think about is where you've been and what you've done and how horrid of a human you are. Can I tell you, there is nothing that you can do on your own to actually enter into his presence. He's actually come already readily to offer you to, into his presence. Great news for you, no matter what you've done or how bad you've been, Jesus has never stopped loving you. Amen. He's never stopped. He's never said, oh, well, you crossed the line, can't love you. No. Somebody in here need a second, third, fourth, fifth, and who knows how many chances? I'm with it. But here's the good news. He never stops loving you. See, that's what Christmas is all about. It was all about God going to extreme measures to connect with us. Yes. It's, it's, it's extreme to think that he literally left heaven, humbled himself, it tells us, taking on the very flesh of man and eventually becoming obedient to death and death on a cross so that we could be with him. See, the only thing that's good in any of us is God. I mean, in reality, that's, that's it. You've got to grab hold of the fact that you've been saved, that you've been forgiven, and that you can come to a place where we share all the time that you can know God. But you don't have to stop there because it was more than that. See, if we stop at just knowing God and saying, man, I'm going to get out of hell. I got, I got my get out of hell free card. I'm here to tell you, if that's where we stop today, you're actually minimizing the commitment and reducing the sacrifice that Jesus has made to come to this earth. And when you do this, you'll miss out on the blessing that God has for you. 
See, it goes back to the four core promises I shared about a few weeks ago out of Exodus. If you didn't hear that, that series, go back and listen to it. Know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, make a difference. I'll, I'll, I'll bring you out. I'll set you free. I'll redeem you, and I'll take you as my own people. There they are. But the reality, it, it, it literally, it's, a, it's these four core promises where he wants to heal you and free you from the bondage and the sin of the, this world that we're living in. To give you a restored and the best version of you. Colossians 1, 1, 27 actually shows me what the best version of me is. And here it is. It's not on the screen. It says, here's the best version of you. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. You want the best version of you? The only time you get the best version of you is when it's Christ inside of you who is the hope of glory. As a Jewish person, you would have thought, man, what are you talking about? Man, we thought this Messiah was coming to take down the bad, bad Roman people. We're gonna, he's gonna establish a new, a new reign on, this, on, on earth. His kingdom was coming for earth. But all of a sudden, he didn't come, my friends, to literally set up a kingdom on earth. He came to defeat darkness and to defeat death for us. They missed the mark. Look at Galatians 4, it says, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, came to redeem those under the law that he might receive adoption to sonship because you are his sons and daughters. God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but today, my friend, you are God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you an heir. Here's the deal. You're like, well, I don't feel that. I don't feel that. I'm not deserving of that. Can I tell you? It's not about your timing. It's about God's timing. And if you're a Jewish person, you literally are all like saying, man, God, your timing was all jacked up. Because from the end of the Old Testament to the beginning of the New Testament, we had 400 years of sheer silence. There were no more prophets. There was no more speaking. It was just silence. And they're questioning, like, where is God at? And finally, Matthew, with this bold proclamation, says, he has shown up. He is Emmanuel. God is now with us. But he came in the form of a baby. What began in a manger in Bethlehem was fulfilled in an empty tomb in Jerusalem. So why can't you feel his presence? So that's the why. Now let me share with you the what. Here's what his presence has done for me. I'm not going to share maybe what he's done, his presence has done for you. I can only preach from my own seat. But here's four things that his presence has done for me. The first is this. His presence will always, has always reassured me when I'm lonely. When I'm lonely. Last week I talked to you about the valleys and that those will happen. That's a guarantee that you're going to have valley moments. You agree? We all with me? Like those valley moments are going to come and, and it's going to happen. And during that part of the message, if you recall, I about had a stroke. And so it was crazy. But, but, but the reality is the valleys are going to come, but you, you, you're, you're just looking at it the wrong way because you're looking for a way out of the valley where the scriptures are clear. You just got to go through the valley. And he's saying, hey, I'm going to take you through it. But if, here's the deal. Even if you're on, in the valley or if you're on the mountaintop, can you hear, hear me today? If you're a follower of Christ, you are not alone. He is Emmanuel, God with us. But I know from personal experience that Christmas is a time that just somehow illuminates loneliness and pain and grief and anxiety. But can I tell you today, you're not alone in your pain. You're not alone in your grief. You're not alone in your sorrow. You're not alone today. God is with you. Psalms 139.7 says, I can what? Never what? I can never what? From your spirit. I can never get away from your what? I can never get away from your presence. I can't do it. It doesn't exist. You can't escape the presence of God. Can I tell you today? Christmas is a celebration of God coming to us so we can't be alone. So we don't have to be alone. Psalm 16 puts it this way. You will show me the path that leads to life. Your presence fills me with joy. Fills me with what? And brings me pleasure forever. Hebrews 1.9 puts it this way. You love justice and hate evil. Therefore, O oh God, your God has anointed you. Anybody want anointed by God today? Amen. He's anointed you, pouring out the oil of what? 
on you more than anyone else. Jesus is joy. We sing about joy. We think about joy. But can I tell you today, this Christmas, you've got to choose joy. You've got to choose to open the present of his presence in your life. Because his presence always comforts me when I'm alone. Second thing, his presence guides me when I'm lost. Now, I know in my own life when I've got to make a big decision, I'm not talking about a decision like, man, like what you're going to order at lunch. You know what I'm saying? Like some of you guys, like you take way too long at lunch. Well, let's pray about that. I'm like, I'll be straight. I pray first about most things, but not about what I'm going to order at lunch. The other day I went out to lunch with somebody and like, I thought it was going to take forever. They're looking at the menu. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, this is very simple. You get arrows compollo. This is not rocket science. And they're looking through it. And finally, they simply just say, well, I'll have what he's having. I'm like, we could have settled this 10 minutes ago, bro. Like, I like you, but not that much. I'm hungry, all right? I come here to eat, not the fellow. You know what I'm saying? Went the other day with somebody and went to a different. I confused them all up, man. They were at the wrong restaurant. I said, I, I'm not going there today. I'm going to this Mexican restaurant. I mean, because we're going to a Mexican restaurant, but I'm going to go choose a different one that day. And I chose a different one. And then we got there. He's like, well, I'll have what he's having. I'm like, well, I'm having a burrito today. They're like, you can't be messing me up like this. I'm like, I'm like well, I'm sorry, man. You can get the Irish completely, but I'm getting this little burrito. I don't even know what's in this burrito, but it looks good. Because I saw it go by a second ago. So I, all that to say, man, you don't have to like spend two hours praying for your lunch. I mean, our kids know, man, like, it, you know, like you pray for the, the food, man. We're here to pray for the food. We are not interceding on behalf of anybody else but the food, all right? Like, this is quick. Let's go. It's right there. I'm diving in. But can I tell you, man, when I have a big decision, I'm going to God because he's going to guide me. Amen. When it comes down to it, to it He's going to be the guide. Psalms 32, 8 says, the Lord says, who says? The Lord. It says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Can I tell you something? Some of you need to start going to God as your guide. 2023, man, that's what you need to do. I believe in 2023, we need to experience an awakening in the church in America today, and I believe it can start right here. And we're going to start on January 8th with 21 days of prayer, and we're going to pray first. We're not going to do anything second. We're not going to do it second. We're not going to go third. We're not going to do it fourth. We don't wear these wristbands just to simply identify ourselves. I hope you wear it as a reminder that, man, when something comes up, you should do what? You should pray when? Well, I'm excited to tell you that uh, Pastor Chris Hodges is releasing a book called Pray First, and it's going to be released in January as a part of 21 Days of Prayer. And I have great news for you today. I have 800 copies of that book. And don't go on Amazon like somebody already did and pre-order the thing for $20. We're going to be able to, because he has gifted it to us, we can sell it for, half, for $5 to you. All right, and so we have it coming. Hopefully, we'll be here by next Sunday, uh, or we're not here next Sunday, all right, by, next, by the end of the week, and we'll be able to sell this to you, but you'll be able to get them on January 1st for sure, so you can start reading. Also, on top of that, Pastor Chris Hodges is going to preach for us the very first message on January the 8th, uh, not on this stage. He'll be in Birmingham, Alabama, bringing it to us, and we'll be joining thousands of churches that understand this idea that we've got to pray first. That's why we, the start of the year, we go to 21 days of prayer and fasting because I believe that if the church is going to show up and do anything amazing in 2023, and if anything's going to awaken our culture, it's got to happen in the church first. And so church, let me just tell you, we got to wake up and literally start leading the way in this. Because here's what I know for a fact of life is that if the church doesn't wake up, then how do we expect the culture to wake up? Stop asking for the culture to wake up and maybe you need to take a look in the mirror and say, man, can I be disciplined for these 21 days to literally pray? We're gonna worship every single morning for 21 straight days. Uh, I'll give you the times in a few weeks because I don't remember what they are, but we'll be here Monday through Friday in the morning, live with live worship and live preaching and most important, live praying. And then we'll, on the Saturday mornings, we'll be in this room preaching and praying and worshiping together. And then on Sundays, we pray in our services, so we think that confesses, does a good job, all right? But the reality is, is mark your calendars now because we've got to be willing to, to see this culture wake up. We need an awakening in our culture, and I believe that we can lead it. Because here's what I know. We all end up somewhere 
but very few arrive at a place on purpose. And I believe through 21 days of prayer, God will guide you and he'll actually show you the purpose that he's called you to. He'll show it to you. But you've got to go to him and start praying and start asking for his presence to guide you. See, some of us, I think you view yourself as this just genetic blob, like, like it just plops down right there. And that's where it's at. But I'm here to tell you, you're more than just a, a strand of DNA. God created you for a reason and for a purpose. And he wants you to fulfill it. And it's a, it's, a, it's a life of fulfillment. Look at John 10, 10. In red letters, it says, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come. Who has come? Jesus has come in order that you might have life and life in all its what? It's, he wants to guide you to a full life. Anybody want a full life this Christmas? Come on now. Then go to him. Ask for his presence to guide you. The third thing his presence does for me, it comforts me when I'm afraid. Now, Fear is a powerful force. Fear is a paralyzing force in our culture today. As a matter of fact, lots of people use it. The enemy is actually, Satan is actually using his fear to keep us from a life of fulfillment. But the opposite for me of fear is love because God is what? God is love. And if God is with us, then love is with us. So here's the question then. If we believe that the Son of God came and God is love and he's a part of that, the whole triune thing, the Trinity, then why in the world are we afraid of anything? Why are we afraid? Why, why as followers of Christ are we afraid to stand up and be counted? Why are we afraid as followers of Christ in the church to say, you know what, we don't agree with that choice or we don't agree with this and we don't agree with this. And, be, and it's not because of my personal opinion, but it's because this is what God said. Amen. Like, why are we afraid of that? Amen. Why are we afraid to, to stand up and say, you know what, I'm not going there. Right. I mean, I can't wait for January and February because, man, I've been studying the Great Awakenings and I've been, studying, uh, I've been studying Germany in the 1930s and how the church responded to Hitler and all these different things. And can I, oh, man, I can't wait. Oh, man, it's going to be, man, uh, yeah, we're going to stop. Yesterday, like, we, 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 we closed a chapter of parenthood. We, we graduated our oldest child from college, and so she is officially now off of the payroll. Praise God for that. And, and like, and so we're celebrating that. But yesterday, the speaker was there, and he's speaking, man, and, and man, he was laying, and he gave me some one-liners that I can't wait to use. Le, Levi actually turned to me and says, oh, you're going to use some of those. Oh, it's like if you only knew. Can I tell you, man, like, are we afraid to speak out because you're afraid you'll get canceled? Do you not trust God enough to say that he's not going to, to, to lay us down because, but that he'll bless us? Can I tell you something? I'm reading this book and, and he's talking about the, he's talking about the whole COVID thing and, 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 and how church is closed, but they let strip bars and, and, and clubs and casinos stay open, that those were a necessity to our culture. Can I tell you, the only thing that doesn't have a shortage in America today is alcohol and drugs. You talking good, hey, Church, when are we going to wake up and say, we don't do this no more? I, I, you need to come in January and February because we're going to stop, all right? But here's what I know. Josh, one, because I'm, I'm about ready to start preaching a whole different series. It says, have I not commanded you? Then be strong and courageous. Do not be what? Don't be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. A clear command and an incredible promise from God. Isaiah 41.10 says, don't be afraid, for I am what? Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with, I love this, come on, with my what hand? With my victorious right hand. God is here today, my friend. And the God of Scripture that tells me I'm going to be victorious is the same God today as he was in that passage. Can somebody wake up and say, I'm going to stand up and be counted on, but God, I need your presence to comfort me when the enemy tries to make me afraid that to stand up. Can I, okay, I'll just go here. This is an illustration you're going to hear again, but just go with it. In Germany in 1930, there were 18,000 churches. 3,000 of them somehow believed that Hitler was right. Like they signed it, like, yeah, we agree with Hitler, like the Jews should be exterminated. 3,000, 
with a guy named Bonhoeffer stood up and became a, a part of a, a movement of churches. He said, man, we disagree with this. And there were 12,000 churches that stayed silent. And Bonhoeffer went on to say, if those 12,000 would have joined the 3,000, they would have had 15,000 churches that could have literally shut Hitler down and saved the lives of millions of Jewish people. Hello? He goes as far to say that the blood of every dead Jew is on the hand of the church that stayed silent. If you want to be a part of the River Church in 2023, you better be ready to be woke up. I ain't talking about getting woke. I'm talking about getting awoke in. And I got a whole other message on that now too. But I'm here to tell you, they're going to hear from us. Amen. And we're going, to, we're going to knock on the gates of hell. And we're going to stand up against sin. And we're going, to stand up for, we're going to stand up for those that need stood up for. And we're going to make a difference. We're just not going to have slogans of no God, fire, and freedom, and scare And I, 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 bottom line, somebody said, well, but lots of people, might, there might be people who leave your church because you're going to offend them. If, they're, if you're offended by the gospel of Christ, then I'm here to tell you this isn't your church. Amen. I mean, just to be honest, this is all completely free. And I'm going to stop because, like, because like we're out of time, all right? But, but the reality is his presence will guide us and I'm trusting he's gonna guide us in 2023. Fourth thing is this, his presence strengthens me when I'm weak. Strengthens me when I'm weak. I've had people tell me, man, I, Matthew, I'm just out of gas. I feel stranded on the side of the road. I'm at the end of my rope, all the things. But can I tell you, if God is with us, then that equals we have power. Amen. Exodus 33, 14 says, the Lord said, who said it? I will go with you. And I will what? I will give you victory. God is with you today and he's fighting for you. Isaiah 40, 29 says, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. If you had your Bible and you were underlining things, I would say you should underline the word strength and power today. Because that's what he gives. When I think about the way Jesus lived his life, and some people are like, well, is that really true? Well, obviously it was true enough that thousands of people were willing to lay down their life for him in order to say, I'm following him. They died for their faith. See, I'm thankful today that Jesus came for the weak. I'm thankful that he came for the weary. I'm thankful that he came for those dealing with fear. Thankful he came for the one who was lost. And I'm thankful that he came for the one who is lonely. Because that was me. And for many of you were to be honest, that is you. And this for me demands a response. Not a response of ego or anger. But if God is truly with us this Christmas, if you believe that like I do, then it demands a response from me. And a lukewarm response is not gonna work. Where, where you got one foot in one camp and one foot in the other camp, it doesn't work that way. If God, if you really believe John three sixteen, for God so loved the world, if he so loved the world that he would send his son, then what's holding you back today? What's holding you back today from saying that I'm going all in? That I don't care if they cancel me, I don't care if they shun me, I don't care if they, they mock me or if they talk about me. What's keeping you this Christmas from going all in and truly experiencing the full presence of the greatest present you can ever receive and that's the presence of God? It's more than just singing a song that he's your way maker, but it's allowing him to be that today. So what is it today that's keeping you from responding? What's keeping you from going all in? With every head bowed, every eye closed, maybe you're here today and you're ready to say, you know what, Matthew, I'm not all in.
right now, you could simply say by raising your hand, I'm going all in. I'm not asking you to, to go serve in, in any ministry in the church. This is you committing to God to say, I'm willing to go all in for you today. No matter what it costs me, I want your presence. And I need your presence today. If that's you today, I just want you to slip your hand up real quick. I'm going to pray with you. Is anybody else like that? I'm going, I've got to go all in this Christmas, man. I'm, I can't hold back anymore. I've got to go all in and experience the full presence and power of God. Father, you've seen every hand that is raised. And Father, I pray right now that, that as they commit to you to go all in on your, on your, with you and for you, that God, you would fill them with your presence and with your power and that your Holy Spirit would do in them and do for them and do through them what only your Holy Spirit can do this Christmas. That God, that as they gather, that God, they would experience you, their healer, you, today all of us would experience you our way maker as we finish our time once you stay on your feet let's worship together